So we all know that we have been in the midst uh, of a genetic revolution. It goes back, obviously, to the 1950s when we discovered that DNA was a double helix. But I think the revolution really took hold. In my mind, I have this image uh, etched uh, somewhere in my brain of both uh, Tony Blair and Bill Clinton standing in the Rose Garden uh, announcing that the human genome had been decoded. It's turned out to be much more complicated than that, and I don't want to denigrate in any way whatsoever the uh, tremendous effort and uh, achievement that was represented by decoding the human genome. It's a landmark in, in science, um, <clears throat> and it continues to inform everything that I'm going to say about epigenetics. But sadly, understanding our, each of our individual human genomes only gives us one perspective on how genes may be related to health and disease. Epigenetics, however, is dealing with another paradox, and that is the paradox that every cell in our body, uh, we have over 200 cell types, we have over 3 billion cells, every cell, whether it's liver, kidney, heart, lung, brain, has the identical genetic code. And yet immediately, each one of those cell types is very distinct from uh, one another, and yet they're all supposedly arising from the same uh, book of information. So something is going on here, uh, and the concept of epigenetics has been put forward initially to try to explain how uh, th this book can be read differentially by cells, and those changes in the uh, readout of the cells actually dictates how cell specific changes uh, occur. Um, and so that's how epigenetics came into our vocabulary as, as you see on the screen, the study of reversible heritable changes in gene activity and expression that are not dependent on alterations in the underlying DNA sequence. So we come then to a, a comparison of what we mean by the terms epigenetics and genetics. So genetics, of course, is the heritable transmission of information based on differences in DNA sequence. It's a very tight relationship. But epigenetics is the heritable transmission of information uh, in the absence of these changes. So it's the readout of the information that's contained in, in, in DNA. And by putting different marks, uh, and again, I'll explain this briefly in a moment, but by making these epigenetic changes, which are relatively long-lasting, even in the, li in the lifetime of an individual, um, this alters the way in which the, the genome is read in that particular cell type. And those marks, as I said a moment ago, uh, are relatively permanent in the lifetime, but they're not totally permanent. They're reversible. And so this starts to give you a machinery whereby factors in the environment and perhaps factors in experience can influence the uh, way in which our genome is read in a way that has relevance to one's life experience, and the environment. Uh, because there's such a profound relationship between early life stress and uh, psychiatric illness in the form of depression in particular, and also the comorbidity of depression and addiction, and then addiction per se, there's been a lot of work done primarily by Eric Nessler in New York City looking at the epigenetic mechanisms of depression and also in, in addiction. And he has some uh, wonderful evidence that there is indeed uh, epigenetic changes uh, that may be linked to depression. And that table underneath is a, is a series of uh, very convincing experiments showing the links between epigenetic change uh, that, that is induced by stress. And very importantly, how those changes can be reversed by antidepressant treatment uh, which may start to explain in a new way how antidepressants are actually working. The life of a child uh, and the quality of the care that they get is so profoundly important to that individual, to the family, and to society. I mean, I can't think of a greater social responsibility than ensuring that the care and the well-being that children get is perhaps the highest priority that we should have as a society. And yet, sadly, we know uh, at every turn that there are many children who are severely abused in their life uh, and that 
we now have a, an inkling of how these mechanisms of epigenetic change, which influence perhaps uh, certainly the, the way in which we respond to stress and how that might influence our mood and our cognition and thereby the, you know, our, our mental health status. Thank you very much.